Good morning, family of God. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. It's your brother Sam Lopez, aka DJ Sam Rock, live at Soul Winners with a Z dot O R G. Also at Soul Winners with a Z dot O R G, streaming on all the social media platforms, the major ones at least YouTube, t- um, X, formerly known as Twitter, and all the places where you could catch a live stream or where you could catch a podcast. Um, that's the major ones, the major platforms. If we're not on a platform that you're your favorite platform, and we're not streaming there or we're not podcasting there, please let a brother know so that way I could try my best to get our podcast on those platforms as well. I don't know all the platforms. There's new ones coming out all the time. Amen. But um, to be fair, if you let me know uh, where you would like to see or hear the podcast, let me know and I'll try my best to get on that platform as well. Good morning, Sister Joanne. I see you. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. It's a new day, a new start, right? A time to get together on the Morning Devo. I love these sessions. You already know. Um, and that's why I'm so dedicated um, to what God has called me to do on these Morning Devos. Amen. I believe it really makes a difference. I know in my life it makes a difference. It keeps me in check. It keeps me consistent um, with reading the Word of God, with believing what I know and knowing what I believe. Amen. And continuing moving forward in victory, knowing that God is able to do and to achieve anything that he wants in our lives, as long as we remain steadfast, as long as we remain consistent and obedient to his word, amen, sky's the limit, right? Sky's the limit. So proving your faith, we're going to be talking about faith today, amen, why not? Everybody's talking about their faith. So I think it's time for believers in Christ to really know what we believe, amen? And I know a lot of people out there ask me, um, you believe in a God, then prove it, then prove it. Amen. And I'm like, okay, let's go for it. Let's prove my faith. Amen. Faith is not something that's a pie in the sky idea. I know a lot of smart people that think that we don't have a faith that we could hold on to a faith that's credible a faith that is worth proving or can be proven. Um, but the Bible surprise, the Bible says otherwise, uh, we need to prove our faith. Amen. And to do that, we're going to see that in the scriptures. We're going to be in 1 Peter chapter number 1, verses 6 and 7. 1 Peter chapter number 1, verse 6 and 7. Proving your faith here on the morning devil. Let me write, read you what I wrote on um, the caption here. It says, Why does faith need to be proven? Why does faith need to be proven. And you know me, I'm not talking about faith and faith. I'm talking about faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. My bro, Blas Antonio Oliveres, uh, Brother Tone, God bless you, man. Welcome to the Morning Devos. Good to see you, my friend and my brother. Amen and amen. Yes. Uh, We up early in the morning, right? So East Coast timer, amen, right here on the Morning Devos. So proving your faith, if we can't prove what we believe then it's not worth believing in. I'm telling you right now. Amen. Everybody has their truth. But I believe that there's only one truth. Because the truth by definition, if you look it up, truth by definition is exclusive. That means there's only one truth. Amen. And I know a lot of people will like for their truth to be the truth, my truth to be the truth, another person's truth to be the truth. And then we have like all these truths. And then Jesus shows up and says, I'm the truth. Amen. So he narrowed it down to one. And God is one, right? Three persons, one what? So three who's and one what? Three persons, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, and one God. Amen. We don't believe in three gods. Like a lot of my Muslim friends say, oh, you you Christians believe in three gods. No, we believe in one God, three persons, and one God. Amen. Three and one. We believe in the Holy Trinity. And oh. Trinity is not in the Bible, Sam. The word Trinity is not in the Bible. But a lot of religions out there, their words that they speak about are not in their scriptures either. So that shouldn't impose a problem to anybody anyway. Um, But the concept, right, is there, right? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And there was a triunity that created the earth. There was one who spoke it, one who hovered over it, right? And one who created it. Come on, man. We have it there. So why does faith need to be proven? First Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. If you have any questions, comments, 
concerns or any prayer requests, don't hesitate to leave it on the live. That's what we're here for. That's what we do here on the Morning Devo, the Blaze Bible Studies. Amen. Also, if you just want to listen in, and maybe you, you're about to go to work or you're about to um, get on the treadmill or run or walk somewhere or do something that you can't be focused on the screen, no worries, no issue, you could always go to soulwinnerswithaz.org, amen, and click the play button, and we're streaming live there as well. So let's go for it. Let's pray first. After we pray, we'll share this out for like 60 seconds, and you can help me share this out for like 60 seconds. And after we share the 60 seconds after this prayer, 60 seconds, share it out. We'll come back. We'll be in 1 Peter chapter number 1, verses 6 and 7. Proving your faith. I'm excited about this because a lot of people think that we can't prove our faith. Listen, only thing I can't prove, according to the scriptures, right, is that God is real. I can't prove that, right? We don't have to prove it as Christians. Get that weight off your shoulder. Holy Spirit God draws people to himself. Holy Spirit God convicts and convinces people of, convicts them of their sin, convicting me of my sin, and convinces that he's real. Convince me that he's real, right? That's the job of Holy Ghost. Amen. Um, I could go toe-to-toe with a lot of people and debate and answer questions and this, that, and the third, but I've never, I've never, ever met a person that was argued into the kingdom of God. Every single person that I met that's born again and saved made a choice to follow the Lord Jesus Christ based upon what they were going through in their life. Amen. And then they come to a conclusion that if this God of heaven and earth is real, he should be able to change your life. And that's what he did in my life. Amen. What about you? So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that we can prove our faith according to your word. I thank you, Lord God, for every single listener, every single viewer. I pray a hedge of protection. I pray health to their body, strength to their bones. In the powerful name of Jesus, the Christ, the Lord of heaven and earth. I pray that over myself, my family, my wife, our children. Um, Father God, I pray that over my whole entire bloodline, that you would guide, guard, and protect us. The Lopez family, Galant family, Morales, Arroyo family, Clemente family, Lord God. That everyone that's attached, Lord God, to my bloodline, that they will be saved. Or they will become to a recognition of who you are. And the, Lord God, they will know how to prove their faith as well. In Jesus' name, I pray that for every single person on the other side of the screen, on the other side of this mic, that you would do the same for their lives as well and their families as well. In the powerful name of Jesus Christ, I pray this by faith. And those who agree, we all say amen and amen. Let's go for it. 60 seconds to share this out. Help me share this out. Help me break this um, shadow ban that I've been on for years, right, on social media. It's all good, though. Because God draws the people that he needs to draw to himself. Amen. Regardless of the ban, regardless of the low amount of notifications that people get when I go live, God can still do an amazing thing with the one person that he reaches. He could reach millions and millions and millions of people. Amen. With the gospel message just by obedience of one person. I'll be right back. Amen. We're back. We're back. We're back. Brother Al, God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo, my friend and my brother. Thank you so much for allowing me to share uh, my posts and my podcast on your platform. He has an amazing platform on um, social media uh, that 
He shares Christian events in our area and beyond, in Lehigh Valley and beyond. So I'm glad um, that he's able to do that for the community of Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for coming through, my friend. So listen, let's go for it. Let's see what the word says about proven faith. Amen. And we could do this. I'm telling you, if the word says we could do it, then we could do it. Right. That's the way I am. I'm stubborn with my faith. I know that God could move mountains with a small amount of faith that you and I could have. A small amount of faith could move a mountain, could move a situation according to God's word, according to his power, according to his love, grace and mercy. He could do amazing things in your life and in my life if we're just willing to try him out. Amen. We are willing to try God out. He will never fail you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will never put you to shame. Amen. The word of God says, if you come to him, he will never turn you away. Never. You know who turns away? We do. Sometimes we turn away from God. Um, but the word is the word. No one can snatch us out of the hand of a living God. No one. No devil in hell. Or no person from hell. No no person who wants to distract or attack us or no um, demon possession, none of that could take us and snatch us out of our salvation, out of the hands of our Savior. He's a Savior, not a slavier. Amen. We are not under bondage, no more of sin or none of that. Thing. He freed us from that. And I know a lot of people think that um, being a Christian means we can't do this and we can't do that. On the contrary, the Bible says we could do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We could do all things that we want to do, but not everything will be beneficial to us, the scripture says. So a lot of people are just talking. They don't know the scriptures. So we have to be kind hearted. But a lot of people who don't know the scriptures, they hear a lot of stuff, but they don't know the scriptures. Amen. And once you hear certain things that people say, you'd be like, yeah, this person doesn't know what they're talking about. But I'm not going to call them out. Right. We're going to be. Cool. We're going to be kind. We're going to be patient. Amen. And in our kindness, through the kindness of God, men repent. Women repent. They turn from their evil ways and wickedness and they turn to a righteous God. That's my hope every time I get on here that somebody gets saved, man. Somebody get born again and they'll testify um, that God is good. Like I always say at the end of these morning devos, because he is good. It's not a cliche anymore in my life. Amen. I know a lot of church people say God is good all the time and all the time God is good. It's true, um, but it's no cliche over here. I live it. I know it. God has been an incredible work in my life, and I'm believing that he could do an incredible work in the lives of every individual who just calls upon his name, believes in him, puts their faith in him, asks Jesus to forgive you for your sins. Amen. And that takes admitting that you're a sinner in the beginning, right? He will cleanse you from all unrighteousness, forgive you for your sins, send his Holy Spirit to live inside of you. And Holy Spirit, God, who is without sin, right, will lead you and guide you into all truth, not all lies, not all drama. He will lead you into all truth. But the path becomes wide to narrow. Amen. And you start noticing as the narrow path, as you walk it. There's not many people to the left, many people to the right. Uh, there's people in front and people behind, and we're all walking this narrow path. We're not narrow-minded, and even if you say that we are, okay, we are narrow-minded then. We focus on the author and perfecter of our faith, the Lord Jesus Christ. But in that narrow way, amen, we are blocking out the broad way that the Bible says leads to destruction. Who wants to be on the road to destruction anyway? Amen. I was on that road to destruction. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of girls, women, sex, alcohol, violence, drugs, all that. Right? It seemed like the way to go. And the word says, man's ways seem right, but leads to their own death. I'm paraphrasing. Say, man's ways seem right, but leads to the destruction thereof, the Bible says. So, proving your faith on the morning devil let me get it on the screen for those who are just listening amen thank you so much for listening on the podcast and listening on accelerator network it's good to know that we still have listeners of audio and the power of audio will still be something until jesus comes back so here we go proving your faith first peter chapter one verses six and seven amen let's see what the word has for us today first peter one six and seven the bible says this is the NLT, New Living Translation. So be truly glad. There is a wonderful joy ahead. 
Even though, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. This is where we lose people, right? I don't know anybody in their right mind who wants to go through a trial, right? People say, listen, just mind your business and everything will be okay. If you move to an area, a neighborhood that is known to be a tough, rough area, just mind your business and everything will be okay. Be cool. That's a great advice. Mind your business and everything will be okay. But if you know what I know, in this world that's broken and fallen, you could be minding your own business, not bothering nobody, you know, just um, doing you, you know, taking care of your family, working hard. You know, and just being that good person and somebody is going to come and interrupt. Something is going to come in your life and in my life and interrupt. The Bible says these trials will show that your faith is genuine. So be truly glad there is a wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. The Bible is honest. The word of God is honest. We're not going to dodge this word. I'm not going to dodge this word. It says you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. That's how you prove your faith. Right? It is being tested. What's being tested, Sam? My faith is being tested. Your faith is being tested. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Through your faith, though your faith... Is far more precious than mere gold. I repeat what the word says. Your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory. What? Yeah, it says it. It will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. That's a day that's coming in the future. So therefore, that means that Jesus right now is not revealed to the whole world. But one day, Jesus, our Lord, our Christ, will be revealed to the whole world. So we're proving our faith when we go through trials. We're proving our faith when we go through things, when we stay on the course. Don't get off the course. God is good. He's amazing. Don't leave what God has for you. Brother Frank, God bless you. Bless you, Sam. Jesus said, if you don't love him, then you don't love his father. Wow. I love you, Jesus, always because of what's done in my life. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Right. If we don't love the son, we're saying we don't love the father. If we don't love the father, then we're saying we don't love the son. Right. Because Jesus said the two are one. He said, if you see me, you see the Father. And Jesus says, me and the Father are one. I can't. It can't be any clearer than that, but I know a lot of people disagree, even with what Jesus said. So, you know, the best thing that people do, and this is it's, it's, a, it's a tactic that I don't, I don't agree with, but it's a tactic anyway. Since they can't disprove what Jesus said, they'll go around saying that Jesus never existed. Because for some reason, whatever reason, people want to delete Jesus out of their equations. They want to delete Jesus out of the scriptures. I even had a, a man tell me, take out the book of John and you don't have any deity of Jesus. He literally told me that. He said, if you take the book of John out, as if he said it was planted there, it was made, man-made, um, it was just to prove that Jesus had some deity. But he said, if you take out the book of John, you have no um, deity claims. And I was like, man, he's a person who don't read their word, man. And it is what it is. Like I say, like I tell people. To so, um, try to get their point across. And they're in error, man. They're in tremendous error, as a matter of fact. But like, be cool, be kind. Um, people are searching. Everybody's searching for truth. Um, well, I take that back. Not a lot of people are searching for truth anymore. A lot of people are searching for happiness. Um, they're searching for selfish desires. Amen. Uh, how many people were on that road before? I was on that road before. Amen. And I know how it feels to be in a place um, that you want to be accepted. You want to be included. You want to be in the in crowd, right? So you start doing things 
that normally you wouldn't do, but to be impressive, impressive to others, maybe the girls, maybe to the to the homies around the way. You want to be impressive. You start doing things um, just to impress other people to make sure that they know that you could do the same or maybe even better. And a lot of it lets us sin. Amen. But we were young and I was a child and I was walking in childish ways. But the Bible says once you get older, once you become a man, you, know, you don't do the childish things that you used to do. You become a grown up and you mature. Amen. And when in Christ, you start maturing in your faith and you start noticing, wow, I'm not doing the same thing I used to do 10 years ago. Right. When you're on this narrow path, when you're on this road to life, you're not on the road to destruction no more. You're not on the road to the death no more. You're not on the road to hell anymore. Right. You're on the road to heaven. Amen. In the meantime, we're going to be planting seeds of eternal life everywhere we go. You know, a smile could help somebody out. A hug could help somebody out. Prayer could definitely help somebody out. And when you ask somebody, hey, can I pray for you? Because it looks like you're going through something, whatever. I, I don't think a lot of people will reject your prayer. Amen. Um, you know, if they're realistic about it, they will be like, well, it won't hurt. If this brother believes in his God, maybe God, his God could do something in my life. You know, it can only benefit them. It won't hurt nobody for you to pray. And even if they say, no, I don't want you to pray for me. And, you know, they flip you the bird or they curse you out, whatever, you know, you can literally walk away and still pray for them, right? God will still hear your prayers regardless of that person or not wants to. I hear, I see this lady on Facebook. She's always, not only on Facebook, on all social media platforms, she's always challenging um, free will. She said, you Christians say that um, you have free will, but why do you impose on my free will? Why would you pray for me that God will save me? Isn't that imposing on my free will? And she goes on and she goes on. She calls God an immoral being that, you know, she, she's on a, a, a trip for whatever reason to discredit whatever the scripture says. Um, she hates um, everything that the, the Lord has said or done and other people's lives. That's, what, that's the only thing I could conclude. Amen. Well, there was a clip and um, her child walked in um, to the clip and she wasn't too happy about that. And it looks like her child maybe would have some kind of um, mental issue or whatever going on um, by the face that you see, maybe Down syndrome or something like that. And it clicked. I said, she's angry at God, maybe for her daughter's condition, man. And I started really feeling bad. First, I was a little upset with her, but then I started having compassion for her. And I said, man, I know how that feels. When someone lets you down and you think it's God and you blame God. Because when I was 15, when my dad died, guess who I blamed for my dad dying? I blamed God. And guess what? I didn't believe in God. I didn't trust in God like I do now, right? I wasn't saved, that's for sure. Um, and I became a very angry person from 15 years old all the way to 30. If you ask people about me that knew me when my teen years all the way to my 20s and early, yeah, late 20s, like I got saved when I was 30, uh, they won't be able to tell you that I was an angry person. Um, they would see my anger every now and then well up, but they wouldn't tell you that I was an angry person. But I'm telling you, I was a very angry person. I was conniving. I was plotting. Um, other people's demise. I was um, scheming. I wasn't really trustworthy. And people would say, nah, Sam was always a good guy. Um, well, you don't know the half. Amen. If I was good to you, that means you got on the inside of a place where it was safe. But if you didn't know me that, that like that, then the place where uh, you knew me from wasn't really a safe place for you. Amen. Um, but, you know, I digress. But anyway, we could prove our faith when we're going through trials and situations where it's not easy. Amen. How many people have been through hard trials in your life? Right. And the only thing that I could think of how I got out of those hard trials is I stood connected to my faith. I was being tested by fire. Right. And the fire was molding me and the fire was taking the impurities off of of my life and out of my life. I didn't want to be going through that fire. I didn't want to be going through those trials and tribulations. Amen. But Jesus pops up and says that we will go through trials and tribulations 
in this world, we will have trouble, he says. And if Jesus says a thing, it is a thing. It's almost like he promised. And almost in the scripture, it seems like he's promising us that we're going to go through some things. But it, it doesn't say to like leave out of the things. You've heard people pray, and I've prayed for it too. God, get me out of this situation. Sometimes God will leave you in that situation because he's doing something through that situation. Doesn't the scripture say, say all things work for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose and plan? I'm paraphrasing. But First Peter chapter 6, verses 6 and 7 says, So be truly glad. Another scripture that says be glad or be cheerful is what Jesus said. In this world, you will have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer. Because he's come to this world and overcame this world system already. Amen. Uh, he ascended, sent back his Holy Spirit to those who believe and trust in him. And he says, I am coming back. And he's coming back soon. I know. I hear people. I already hear people through the internet saying, you Christians always saying that Jesus is coming back soon. It's thousands of years and he still hasn't come back. You think that God has a time clock according to our time clock? You think God's calendar is like our Gregorian calendar or the Jewish calendar? I don't think so. God knows the perfect, exact perfect time for him to re-enter. He came at the perfect time when he first came here. He's going to come back at the perfect time. Amen. Do I want him to come back ASAP? Absolutely. But not really. Let me tell you why I don't want him to come back like right today. It is people that I love. Right, that I'm not born again, that I'm not saved. And if this is all true, and I believe it is, and just because I believe something is true doesn't make it true, what makes something true is the evidence and the proof of our faith that makes this thing true. Amen? So until everyone that I know that I love, amen, comes into a relationship with the living, loving, holy, righteous, forgiving God, right, just God, amen, then I'll be like, okay, Jesus, come through. It seems selfish, right? Because I'm not really including any, anybody else. But I want everybody that comes along these lines, come along these morning devos uh, to give their life to the Lord. Why not? It will benefit them to eternity. Amen. But I know people choose that. If they want to reject this message, they will. If they don't, if they want to reject God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, God, they will. If they want to discredit the scriptures, they will. But unfortunately... The end result of doing that, according to the scriptures that I believe is the true word of God, amen, says that's going to lead to their own destruction. Oh, why does God send people to hell, Sam? God doesn't send anybody to hell. Surprise, hell wasn't even created for human beings. Hell was created by God for um, the detention or the lockup of the devil and his fallen angels. Somehow we made our way and investigated a little bit too much of what this place was. And then people started ending up in that place as well. So be truly glad, right? Be truly glad there is a wonderful joy ahead. I know when you're going through things, you don't see no joy. You don't see no happiness. Even though you must endure many trials for a little while. That rhymes. Many trials for a little while. It rhymes. These trials will show you that your faith is what? Fake? No. It's going to show that your faith it's genuine, it's true, it's 100, it's there, amen? And nobody could snatch my faith, your faith away from you, even if we're going through the hardest times. Through my hardest time of my life, I've seen people prove their faith and come alongside of me and, and come alongside of my, me and my wife and my family during the hardest times in our life. They were proving their faith by jumping in to our trial. That's an amazing love, man. There's no greater love than this that our friend will lay his life down for another friend. Amen. That's crazy. I've done it with other families. People have done it for me. The Bible says if you comfort others, you will be comforted. Amen. It's a circle of life, a circle of believers, a circle of a community of Christ, a body of Christ. We love each other so much that the world looks at it like, man, that looks like a genuine faith. That looks like genuine love from one another. And they give glory to our God for that. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested. What's being tested? Your faith is being tested. God is not being tempted. God doesn't tempt us. But he will test us. <laughs> God cannot be tempted. Uh, it is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. 
Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. My faith is more precious than any money you could throw at me. I'm not going to compromise for millions and millions of dollars. Amen. I know this ministry is in, it could use millions and millions of dollars to press forward, to move forward, to reach more people with the gospel message. But I'm not going to turn or I'm not going to uh, be a deceiver. I'm not going to be a manipulator. I'm not going to be one of those crazy evangelists that you see on TV or hear on the radio that are only money hungry after people. Uh, after people's money, manipulating people's money to gain more for themselves. Not me. Amen. And pray for me that that would never happen. Yeah, I could use a millionaire to come alongside this ministry and say, listen, I'm, here's the money to secure the building, the office space. Here's the money to, um, you know, get the staff and get the things rolling in a better way. Amen. Of course. Right. But as the money comes in, it should go out the same way. I'm a ministry, so if you give me a million dollars at the end of the year, a million dollars should be going somewhere. Amen. To operational course, to missions, to families, to other ministries. Amen. And to build up and expand the kingdom of God. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus cracks open that sky and reveals himself to the whole world. So that's it. That's all I had, man. I'm out of time. But listen, we were in 1 Peter chapter number 1. I suggest you read the 1 Peter chapter 1 whole entirely. Amen. We we stuck on verses 6 and 7 here when we're proving our faith. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, are increasing in your faith. And uh, I bless you, man. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And I bless you all in the name of Jesus. God bless you all. God keep you all and remember always that God is good. Peace.